Hello everyone. Welcome to week two of Math 241. This week we're going to be using technology in the classroom, or at least discussing it. So what we're going to do first is in this video, I'm going to discuss some of the comments made on the videos and the um, talk about assignment three where you um, explored the um, Desmos parameters, or well, the parameters for the parabolas with Desmos. Then in video two, you're going to be watching a narrated video from a teacher who covers things about the dashboard, the pause mode, pacing, anonymize, overlay, track student progress, etc. on the teacher dashboard. It's really neat. Then in video three, you get me again talking about some of the major design features of what distinguishes a really good Desmos activity from just something where, you know, the students go through the paces because that's really important. Desmos itself isn't the silver bullet. It's how you implement the activities and how you write them. You're going to have two assignments this week. The first one is to play with five different Desmos activities, one for each of the design features that I describe in video three. Each one would take a maximum of about 15 minutes, so that's what, an hour and 15 minutes? Um, and that'll be worth 10 points. If you think about it, right, it's the same as it would be for um, a homework assignment that you would do if, it was, if this was a regular class. And um, plus, you don't have to sit in class. And then the last assignment will be to reflect on your experiences. And that will be another 10 points. Okay, so I remember I took an online class a while ago, and I had no idea for a feeling of the composition of the class. I didn't know if I was the only one or if there was 100 or 10 or what. So I thought I would fill you in a little bit. The reason we're doing this is because a lot of people from the um, Imperial Valley campus were trying having to drive all the way up to SDSU, and I felt really bad about that. So we have four people from Imperial Valley. I'm really glad to see that. Welcome, you guys. 18 are from the SDSU campus. One is from Grossmont. So glad you could join us. And two did not answer. Um, this is when they were doing your text introductions from the um, the online discussion board. In terms of the major, we have nine liberal studies students and nine single subjects, one applied math who's um, going to get a CSET waiver, and six of you uh, did not answer that question in your text introductions. So you can see there's a total of 25 people, which is a nice size class. And I was really impressed and really enjoyed reading all of your introductions, mostly because there was such an air of enthusiasm um, and that's not something I always see. So thank you very much to all of you who have agreed to accept my challenge to keep an open mind for the class. So let's see, in terms of um, where do you see the role of technology, I kind of broke it into three categories. A lot of you said it could be used for homework, and then other people said it could be used in class checking for answers, and a few of you talked about the exploratory side. And um, so I think all of these are correct answers for sure. Um, it's just a matter of thinking about how do we as teachers want to use it as much as we can. So, for example, in homework, um, you can use it to obviously to check answers. Um, as Abraham said, Megan also mentioned a, a really cool list, Kahoot, Socrative, uh, Wheel Decide. I hadn't heard of that one. Um, and Google Slides and Forms and Bubble. So those are actually some of those you can actually use during class. So I should have maybe moved that to the section about in class. But um, what I was thinking in this category is more the idea of using it to just check re results or, as David mentioned, teachers often use it to just throw up a... Um, a graph. Also, Alex mentioned that, like in Math 151, if you want to see, gee, what would happen or why is this definition like it is? Is there a way when you could have, for example, the limit of a function at A not be equal to F of A? Those are some examples of when having um, the ability to generate a quick graph on the fly <clears throat> is really useful. And Celia also wrote um, checking graphs. So um, I want to look at this third category, which is called exploratory. So Saren said, um, it's a great way to keep track of student progress and learn math from different perspectives. I really like that idea. And um, the exploratory nature is something that without technology, it's a little bit hard to, to get students to engage in. But a lot of you did a beautiful job in um, this Desmos assignment 
doing things like, well, what if I put a four in here? What happens to the graph? What if I put a two in? It's that idea of playing what if games that really having this um, conversation with the graph through the technology is just such a powerful medium. And um, the other uh, aspect that Saren brings up here is learning mathematics from different perspectives. So what Desmos tries to do, and again, we'll talk about this as we go through the ex examples this week, is bring in student comments. So when you're doing some of your activities, some of the um, and some of the questions say share with the class. So if you're if you're doing it, you might see three other students who've already put in answers. That's really neat, and it's a way to learn math from different perspectives, and also to really from a teacher's perspective, excuse me, emphasize good and precise vocabulary. In terms of experience, this was somewhat um, consistent with earlier 241 classes. Most people say that they haven't had much experience. So Anand's I thought was particularly interesting. Surprisingly enough, I have not had any experiences with technology in any of my classes or those in any of the elementary classrooms I observed through my early field experience. Very cool comment, although surprising to me, maybe elementary classrooms don't use it quite as much. Um, but the idea of high school students not using it was somewhat surprising to me because I have a lot of uh, friends who teach in the high school or former students, and they say that they use it all the time and their lead teachers use it all the time. One of the main reasons, as I, I think was mentioned in the video, um, is Dan Meyer said that it's used for the SBAC. So that is the um, testing that all uh, high school students have to go through. So um, I like this one. The first time I used this was in my pre-calc class in college. I found it useful and helpful and easy to use. Appreciate that one, Carla. Shoot out because I'm the one who designed those activities and we'll be looking at them um, 